So at that point, you pretty much blacked out or you have no memory recall because you were that drunk. Yes, I was. And then shortly after that, you find out you're pregnant. That don't come see their children because they don't want to deal with a woman that acts like you. I'm keeping it real. But it's not because it's wrong or right. It's just because it's a reality of how relationships are. I honestly don't remember, Your Honor. The so, only reason I remember the ex is because of it being on the day of the car wreck. And then you remembered you'd also had sex with him two days before. Yes. First on the list of psycho women on paternity court is the case between Harris and Sterling. Ms. Sterling and Mr. Harris have been in an on and off relationship for the past 15 years. Ms. Harris is in court today to get Mr. Sterling to step up as the father of her 11 month old son, Kason. Mr. Harris, on the other hand, states that he is not the biological father and is in fact tired tired of raising another man's child. You've come to get the DNA proof you need to remove your name from the birth certificate and finally get Miss Harris out of your life. Is that correct? <laughs> Yes, Your Honor. What could possibly have happened between these two to get him to say something like that? That statement is enough to get one thinking about Ms. Harris. Now we find out why he's bent on stating that Kason isn't his. That's not my baby, and I'm going off of what Charity is telling me. First of all, oh, what is she it telling? is his baby, and he knows it's his baby. That's, that is not the truth. What it is, is his baby. She tells me when we get to arguing, this is not your baby. And yeah, you need... because he get on my nerves and I don't want him to be mm. in my life. Oh, what a juicy reveal. We don't have to think about what Ms. Harris is capable of. It's right there. Now that it seems like the spotlight is on Ms. Harris, we get to see one reason why she's so mean to Mr. Sterling about the whole paternity thing. About him not being the father. So you're saying even and before he... you said this, he was not exactly. stepping up to the plate. And he was cheating the whole time I was pregnant. He That's was cheating. That's a negative. Now, everything about that sounds wrong. The judge concluded that although that is completely wrong, it still doesn't concern the paternity of the baby. The most important concern here is if Ms. Harris was seeing other people. Mr. Sterling had quite a lot to say about that. So now, the first date on this calendar says the doctor's appointment was on March 21st, and the doctor says that Ms. Harris is six to eight weeks pregnant, and you had sex on Valentine's Day. So now, if we count back six to eight weeks, one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks, eight weeks. That is the last week in January. <laughs> this is the major reason Mr. Sterling has doubts in the first place. That's aside from the fact that Ms. Harris says that Kazan isn't his every chance she gets. When she was eight months pregnant, she told me that uh, it was another guy who could be the baby's father, and it broke my heart. First and he of all, that's argument. a lie. I what told happened? You. We had an argument, when... and she just brought that up. I don't know if she was mad or what, but. Whatever what it is, Tell me the it, story. It, it, what a woman. That's her card for each argument they have, it would seem. As it turns out, that's not the whole story. The couple gave the court more tea. Here is the drama they had to add. She said, don't worry, you not my baby's father anyway, so you need to like go and kick rocks, get on with your life or whatever. I'm like, what? Like, we were just together. I was just, you know, the baby's father and everything, but now Did all of a sudden you, I get mad. Did she tell you when? She was with this other guy? Yes, two weeks before, before we had sex on, on February 14th. Hearing Ms. Harrison laugh at the end of each statement this man makes has to be unnerving. More so, if she said all these things to him during an argument or whatnot, why is she so bent on Mr. Sterling being the father? She already mentioned multiple times in the past that he wasn't. She gave explicit details too, apparently. Yeah. You're now saying if we count two weeks me look before like the time when you were intimate with her, which is February 14th, two weeks before before that would be around the first week in February, last week of January. You're saying it puts the window right at the time when she claims she was intimate with somebody else. If it adds up this good, we just have to hear directly from the horse's mouth if everything on the calendar happened. The following conversation ensued. Miss Harris, did you have sex with another man two weeks before you had sex with Mr. Sterling? It wasn't on two the weeks. Yeah, it true. was like three weeks. It was like mm. not even three weeks. So it's so. two to three weeks <laughs> before you were intimate with Mr. Sterling. Yes. You were intimate with another man. The way she says that so casually is quite hilarious, really. Of course, the judge has a question for Ms. Harris. No, because it was not a possibility because I did not have unprotected sex with this man like I did with Chris when I conceived. So you never told me. So he didn't tell you that part. So you did have sex with the other guy, but you used protection. Yeah. What an interesting turn of events. 
Everything is against Ms. Harris at this point. All the evidence is currently not in her favor. Mr. Sterling adds to the heat by telling the court how he feels about Ms. Harris. So, no, no we here lying. today for a reason. Things because happen. she is lying. Either you're the dad because or you're not. she is a liar. That's the reason we here today. And exactly, because you're a liar, is, you need to step no, up pretty I, listen, much. I don't want to take care of another man's child. You want to take I care of the, the, the children yes, that's I do. yours. Yes, I you don't do. Take I love him. I love that little boy. You know that. Don't sit here and face like you just don't want to take care of another man's child. You know that. That's the reason you want me to be the baby daddy. First of all, he has towards this woman is alarming. Would it be wrong to call it far-fetched? I mean... So she asks a very good question, Mr. Sterling. If you had this doubt, when the baby came and you were at the hospital, why execute the birth certificate if you know you have doubt? The thing about it, Yana, like at the eight months when we got into it over the argument, I thought it was just because she might have been mad. Maybe she did just say this out of the side of you know you cheated and you lied and you were wrong. Despite the drama between the two, it seems like there's still a bit of sentiment between the couple. Here is what Mr. Sterling said he did during her pregnancy. Miss Harris, I'm, I'm not laughing. Big old feet, I was baby. there. But get away. I get rubbed away. them big you old was, feet. You was you were up my okay. but, but listen, Come on, listen. Man. No, no, Come no. On, we're not laughing at you, Miss Harris. I'm, I'm laughing with you, though, because I was just looking at some old pictures when I was man, eight, nine I'm months pregnant. To... And, I mean, Listen. my feet were huge. Oh, was like, it's pregnant. crazy. It's crazy. I'm sexy and I own... What a duo. Now it's time for some real talk before the results come in. Mr. Sterling tells us what he really feels about the whole situation. Mr. Sterling, what is your hope? I still don't really understand whether you want Kaysen to be your biological child or whether you don't. He don't understand nothing. I do, Yana. I didn't grow bond with with him like he calls me daddy he's the one like i'm always looking for but you ain't gotta do all that you oh, save right. all that drama for your mom baby so you say like time but as one would expect miss harris did not let him speak she had her own things to add Another move man, on baby. back to your previous relationship that you just last week got caught i hope you mind i hope you in a, in a, in a sense, i hope you mind you know what i'm saying like not because of her for real i i You're just want the results so i can move on with my life if he mind or he not Bye. i just want to go about it the right way. I'm ready to go to the result. He even got really emotional. Now, we get to hear the results, and everyone can get what they were waiting for. Mr. Sterling, you are the father. Exactly. 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 So what you got to say now, you baby? Are spot all this, all this, and that. See, you know, you we got to leave here. You know that, right? Nobody saw that one coming. Not even Mr. Sterling, especially not him. As one would expect, Ms. Harris had her own thing to say. Judge Lake also held a counterattack. There are men that don't come see their children because they don't want to deal with a woman that acts like you. I'm keeping it real. But I it's not because it's wrong or right. It's just because it's a reality of how relationships are. I can see how frustrated you are. I've heard exactly because what you said. Because he's a liar, he cheat. But the point, I get that. That's why our relationship and Let dynamic is like that. You think I don't get that? This is one funny case, and unlike many others, it is between husband and wife. Also, unlike many others, this is not their first rodeo. Mrs. Hendricks previously accused Mr. Hendricks of being unfaithful on couples court. She was naked on the bed, and Chris was in there. Oh, I'm perfectly aware of what's at the stake. There's the girls and then the baby, I mean. You're expecting? Yeah, I'm Oh my. Months. Mr. Hendricks was asked, had he had sex with his ex? What was his response? His response was no. Now, the tables have turned, and Mr. Hendricks is accusing his wife of cheating. Not only that, but he believes she has a baby for another man as well. Mr. Hendricks, you say you confirmed your wife has been unfaithful and there is no way her child is yours. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So you're also petitioning the court for a lie detector test to determine the extent of your wife's cheating. Well, that's a first. Mrs. Hendricks is not having any of it because she believes that the baby looks so much like him. She goes on to call the baby his twin to buttress her point. It's interesting that she's so confident about her husband's semblance to a one-month-old baby, but oh well. And you don't think he has any reason to deny the child? No. I mean, I was very honest with him with what happened before, and he has taken it to the extent of denying our son. After saying that she has done everything her husband wants from her regarding the child, including a circumcision and naming the baby after him. This is what Mr. Hendricks has to say. I just, I don't feel that bond like I do with my other children. I mean, it, it, I even he, named he, him after your dad. I mean, he barely looks like me. I'm not seeing any characteristics. He don't have any of my personal features. I just, I just, I don't know. You must I'm be not blind. Seeing, I'm not seeing it as, as well as the others. So he feels some sort of bond with his other kids, but right now he's not feeling it with baby Christopher. For him, that's enough reason to doubt the paternity of the baby. Going back 
back to the beginning, what caused all of this drama in the first place? Uh, his Facebook messages were coming to my phone, and it was one of his co-workers, and she was saying very sexual things to him. About 10 days later, I had found out that I had endometrial cancer, and I had gotten real sick, and... Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Well, I'm in remission now, thank, thank, thank God. Thank God, yes, amen. And um, whenever I was diagnosed with all of that, I just got very upset. Well, oh boy, she's ill, and all of that happened within that short time frame? What an unfortunate time it must have been. Right now, Mrs. Hendricks does not trust her husband. Alongside this, she has a diagnosis of cancer that has her living life a bit too fast, since she believes she's just got a death sentence. Mr. Hendricks has something to add to the mix. Mm -hmm. Partying refusing and doing things home. that refusing to come home. Mm, she did. She never came home. At night? Never. She I always stayed at my family member's house. She'd stay house. at family member's house. You knew where I was. I, I mean, I'm a very predictable person. You would come home long enough to change your clothes, take a shower, leave again. What a spicy addition. Now it seems like a butterfly effect makes their home an unsafe space for everybody. Where and I was it was so uncomfortable with our past and with our life that I didn't even stay in the house. I took our car and I wound up driving around town, wasting gas, falling asleep in it on dirt roads because I couldn't go home. Well, Mr. Hendricks is not the only victim here. Mrs. Hendricks fills the court in on all their business and what happened after the diagnosis. Maybe when I got the phone call, whenever I had cancer, you told me, well, with everything's going on, should I care? Mm. Wait a minute. Did you say that, Mr. Hendricks? To an extent. No, those were his exact words. To an extent. Oh, now that's cruel. We so were, you all were in a very bad place. We were it was bad. we were fighting very bad. I mean, that was like I said. Judge Lake took the words right out of everyone's mouth. Now it makes sense that they don't trust each other anymore. Mr. Hendricks is asking for a lie detector test on Mrs. Hendricks, and she's adding that he completely denied their baby. It's beginning to add up. We're this pattern she developed, going out, drinking, not coming home, this is the behavior that you felt indicated that she potentially could be sleeping with somebody else. This was where Mr. Hendricks explained the origin of his trust issues. After they tried resolving their problems, they threw a little party at their house, which involved some drinking. Here, the family member who she lived with spilled the beans to Mr. Hendricks. The person confirmed that she indeed was with another man. And the family member looked at her and said, you're, you're a bull-faced liar. You straight came to my house that very next night and said you did it. I hadn't. Now, that she, you slept with that somebody she had else? Sexual relations with this other gentleman. That did not come from me. That came from a family member that I was around. You know that. But at the same time, she keeps telling but everybody she was too drunk that she don't remember if anything happened or I not. I did say that. It keeps getting hotter and hotter here. Seeing as we've been hearing just one side of the story, it's time we heard Mrs. Hendricks and all she has to say about everything. Had started a bonfire and everything. One of his friends that he'd hung out with and worked with came over. While we were hanging out, we were drinking whiskey, and we I had ended up kissing him. And I immediately called him and asked him to come and get me. And I told him what happened. And he said, where are you? I told him. He came and he ended up leaving without me. And I remember up to that point and then after that I don't. I mean, I don't remember because I kept drinking. She remembers kissing him in the kitchen though. I do. The pair of them are really something. Now if Mrs. Hendricks cannot remember everything that happened that night, what can one do? Started doubting it right off the bat. Why? Because we, we went through extensive fertility medicine to have our four-year-old daughter. Tried for five years. Unprotected sex. No, 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 nothing. So four years after we have our first daughter, she winds up pregnant just out of the blue after our little issues and after she goes and starts visiting and, and hanging out. As it would turn out, there's more to the story. What are the odds that she would wind up pregnant at this particular point in time? Mrs. Hendricks explains further how this may be possible. I don't find that fair whenever he's bringing up the treatments I went through because I was 170 pounds more and the doctor even told you if I'd lose weight, it'd be a lot easier for me to get pregnant. But you didn't for four years. And then you have the then you have the surgery. It's you not go like you go on a little party it's rant. Straightforward, so you start hanging out with another guy and then all of a sudden you wind up pregnant. You don't find that funny at all. Now what do we do? After a series of back and forth, we get even more into the story of these two. Before Mrs. Hendricks came to term, they paid for a 4D ultrasound of the baby, where they already started the comparison between father and son. Mr. Hendricks really was so bothered about all of this. You don't see a blob, that's a baby. Well, you can see the nose and eyes, but it's yeah. it was too early, We, you know? It was kind of but, a waste of money. But, but your point so really. is, is that you were that worried about it. Oh, I was very concerned. I wanted to know right then. I mean, we fought over this. I mean, we fought over these pictures so much because he's like, I don't think he looks like me. I said, how, how do you figure? I mean, you know it's bad when you're evaluating a baby in the womb. Finally, the results are out. This was the conclusion of the case. Mr. Hendricks, you are the father. <laughs> I told you you had no reason. I mean, you didn't need to doubt me. Miss Hendricks, he did. And there was reason it to was doubt. It was there. I'm sorry. 
We, we, we it, got it the answer there. we wanted. Again, with husband and wife, this case is everything. Mr. and Mrs. Kiesel are married, and Mrs. Kiesel is currently pregnant. Her husband is here in court to save their marriage and prove that the baby is his. Mrs. Kiesel, on the other hand, has strong doubts about the paternity of the baby, and she believes it's not his. Mrs. Kiesel, you say it breaks your heart to stand in court to prove that your husband is not your unborn child's father, but you know the truth. Another man is. Mr. Kiesel adds that today's results are so important because his marriage has been on the line. Mrs. Kiesel cheated on him a month into their marriage, resulting in them being here today. It's been heartbreak and lots of issues for us. So you're supposed to still be in the honeymoon, newlywed phase. And instead of that, you have a paternity issue. One month, isn't that the wildest thing? Mrs. Kiesel went on to explain how all of this is affecting them both, from their marriage to the pregnancy itself. It has affected me in a huge way, not only just our marriage, but my pregnancy as well, because it's hard for me to necessarily, I mean, yes, I'm excited for it, um, but it makes it harder when there's so much stress put into the pregnancy. Um, it, you know, rather than being all everybody together, you know, having a good time for like a baby shower, say we were supposed to have a baby shower, Hour. She adds that in as much as she made mistakes and she owns up to the mistakes she's made, it's affecting her. And she is unable to enjoy the pregnancy like a mother should. Judge Lake cut her off by asking her the important questions. I need to ask you this. What in the world would possess you to cheat on your husband one month? Yes, it's quite mind boggling. If you're cheating after just one month of a marriage, it's like there's no point of the marriage in the first place. What a woman. She has this to say. Really rushed into a relationship. We had been dating on and off, but it was back and forth with my ex and him. We both have broke up a couple times over while we were dating. And then when we got married, it just was kind of like a let's go do this kind of thing. It got was it. like, let's do it today. So we did. And I just feel like we might've got married a little too young. Not necessarily young, but quick. Wow, she wasn't over him, huh? How stressful that must've been for her. <laughs> Poor Mrs. Kiesel. To make things worse, she and her husband have been trying so hard for a baby, bad enough that they took a test at least once a week. And at first I was really Really, you know, happy and excited. And then just a couple seconds later, it hit me that I'm about to have to tell him something, you know, no husband wants to hear. So you found out you were pregnant first, and then you knew you had to tell your husband. Yes. Because you knew there was a possibility this other man could also be your ex could be the child's biological yes, father. Honor. Putting the spotlight away from Mrs. Kiesel and back to Mr. Kiesel, here is his own side of the story. So we had been taking a test once a week and I happened to take one and it was positive. And at first I was really, you know, happy and excited. And then just a couple seconds later, it hit me that I'm about to have to tell him something, you know, no husband wants to hear. So you found out you were pregnant first and then you knew you had to tell your husband. Yes. What a heartbreak moment it must have been. To further add to drama, Mrs. Kiesel told the court about her conception window, which is the estimated time period the baby was conceived so as to know what man is the biological father of the child. She said it was March 8th. Watch this. And now, Mr. Kiesel, when were you intimate with your wife? We were intimate on the 8th. You were? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so that's gonna be a K for Mr. Kiesel. I gotta ask you this, Ms. Key, so when were you intimate with your ex? Which day? The 7th and the 9th. Without a doubt, the dates being so close in proximity further fuels doubt about the paternity of this baby. Do you remember being intimate with your husband on March 8th? I honestly don't remember, Your Honor. And so the truth is, you don't even remember being intimate with your husband on March the 8th, but you do remember sleeping with your ex on the 7th and the 9th. When were you intimate with your wife? We were intimate on the 8th. Now, would you look at that? She knows those dates do well. Who knows what would have happened on the 8th if he were around. Adding salt to the injury, she further stated that she does not remember being intimate with her husband on the yacht. However, look at the amount of detail she gave about her ex. Again, what a woman. You believe, despite these dates being so close in proximity, that you are the child's father. Mr. Kiesel is choosing to have so much faith in this. Judge Lake asked why he does, and he began to state similarities between him and the unborn baby, starting from their nose shape down to the shape of their upper lips. What a man, really. Mrs. Kiesel went on to say that she hopes Mr. Kiesel is the father and she wants their marriage to work. That's an interesting statement from a woman that cheated a month from her wedding day. And how does it make you feel that your wife is saying, I don't think you are the father? That hurts extremely bad seeing that I'm there 
Instead of it just being, you might not be the father, she's saying she thinks I'm not. And that dampens the mood between us. What a mood dampener that must be. After telling the court that he needs this baby to be his, and his wife keeps saying that the baby isn't, what an interesting mood dampener indeed. Finally, the results are in. Since the baby hasn't been born yet, a prenatal DNA test was performed. Here are the results. Mr. Kiesel, you are the father. I know that has to feel good. <laughs> A little bit. How's it feel, sir? Amazing. I'm so happy for you. And I know those are tears of joy. And I can imagine you have cried the other kinds of tears. Ms. Adams has been in a relationship for 13 years. When they break up, she gets with another man about two months after. I had separated. When we separated, I had was kind of going through my vulnerable stage and things like that. I had one out actually one day, you know, to the bar. And that's when I had met Markeith. And when I met Marquis, that's when uh, we start, you know, having dealings with each other and things like that. All right, so you you were in a long-standing relationship. Yes. Um, and then you broke up. Yes. Interesting turn of events. In addition, Ms. Adams was not intimate with her ex during this period. Mr. Spencer was the only man she had dealings with. However, after she got pregnant and had twin baby girls, her ex is claiming the children, calling them his babies. How did we get here? Once I had the babies, the pictures went out on, on the internet, and that's when my ex-mother called me and said that those are my grandbabies. They look just like my son. And so once she said that, had you been thinking of that in the back of your mind all Never. this time? Never. 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 It, I was starting to hear it so much, and I was getting so many phone calls from, like, my ex side of the family and everything about the boy. Oh, well. Here we go again with the semblance business. If I had a penny for each time they take a bet on paternity simply because the baby resembles the supposed father's baby pictures... I'm just like, whoa, um, I never thought that Marquis was not the father, but then, you know, she was just telling me, oh, Christian, put two or two together, just think about it. You know, like, it, it don't make sense. You already had the babies early, so you could have been already pregnant when you was messing with Mr. Spencer. You you know, she was just, you know, saying things like that and stuff. So then I started saying, well, you know what? You never know. And I was also just going off of emotion and knowing I was still in love. Fair enough. Some people try to use special holidays to get back into their ex's lives via text. Christian Adams, however, plans to use twin babies. What a woman. Um, after I had the babies, Marquis was around for the first month. D throughout that whole month, it was like so much drama with his ex, so much drama with him. It was like... So there were other people on both sides. Since they were not in a committed relationship, it's very plausible. Now Adam's ex called her, and they had an interesting conversation. Those babies are mine. Is that true? Um, I said that I knew that they was Marquis Evans. I said, but to this point, you just never know. Just come back, because I want you to come back regardless, and we could just start over. And once that happened, he said, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and come back. Once he came back, without a shadow of a doubt, I didn't even want to deal with Marquis at all. All right, so once your ex came back, you were done with Mr. Spencer, because yes. you really wanted to be with your ex. Yes. So she lied to Markeith and his ex about DNA test results that they never did. Oh, the lengths a woman would go to get back with her ex she's in love with. And I seen pictures of her tagging Mitchell's mom as a grandkids. And you telling me this whole time these was my kids. And man. what did she say? She was like, oh, I ain't tell them that. Mitchell just automatically assumed these was his kids. She told me that, you know, like, he automatically came back and was like, oh, them my kids, I'm gonna be <laughs> taking care of them kids. He must have been so stunned by all of this. Well, in court today, we have Mitchell, the ex's mother, and possible grandmother to the twins to tell her own side of the story. The first week that they was born, uh, Kristen's mom called me. So she said, by that, look, take a look at the babies. Look at these pictures. Something ain't right. So she sent me the pictures. So I'm like, oh my God. So I went looking for some of Mitchell's baby pictures and I started sending them through the family. And the family's like, oh my God, these Mitchell's uh, babies. So as I talked to Kristen, I'm, are you sure? After so much drama and pent up emotions, the result Results are finally in. This time, because they are fraternal twins, there is a high chance that they are children of different men. Hence, there are two DNA results. Now, the results are... Is the father of one year old, Kamariana Adams Spencer. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Spencer. What a turn of events. Now, for baby Kamarian, we get to find out the results. Kamarian Adams Spencer. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Spencer. <laughs> Oh, boy. Ms. Adams sure won't be happy about this one. Everyone's emotional. Mr. Spencer has something to say to conclude the case. Mr. Spencer, you are 
the biological father. What are you feeling in this moment? Like if she knew like there was my kids all this time, like and you should never not allow me to build that relationship with them. I will say that we have to count our blessings and the children are only 13 months. And you do have the time and the opportunity to establish a bond with them and to be there for them. Miss Short is a teenage girl with a 21-month-old son. Her mother opened the court case on her behalf to prove that Mr. Johnson is the father of baby Jabari. Of course, Mr. Johnson denies that he's the father here. Mr. Johnson, you are in court with your mother and say you might have been the plaintiff's first love, but you weren't the only one. You refuse to do anything for her son until the DNA results prove you are his biological father. Is that correct? Yes, you are. Oh, it seems like we have love in the court today. She got pregnant by her first love. Isn't that something? There's another man in the picture too? Spicy. Additionally, Ms. Short mentions in her testament that she needed help. What could that possibly mean? Ms. Short, you say you need help. Yes. Explain. Yes, because he's the father of my son, and my son, as a boy, need a father figure. And I need extra help, like, don't, while I'm in school. <laughs> we gotta do this for Jabari, stop. She just need to know, is he the father? So he can step up and do the right thing, hopefully. What an emotional moment. Mrs. Short's mother adds that she stopped Mr. Johnson from coming over to their house. She did this because she did not want them to have any feelings for one another, added to the complications that already exist. Little did she know. She says she does not need them getting attached to one another in case Mr. Johnson isn't the biological father. How did you meet? Well, it was over Facebook, and we used to text. He was my first kiss, first everything. Okay, so after you met, you all started having sex, and at some point, you find out you're pregnant. Yes, me and Mr. Johnson had sex April 23rd. What a tale indeed. Seeing that Jabari is 21 months old, all of this happened about two years ago. Ms. Short is still telling her story. Here's what she has to add. I seen him on Facebook with another female, and he was like, I don't want you, I want her. He was talking about the other female. And I was like, he just left, he just left me. <laughs> After that happened, it was May 3rd. We, I went out to eat with some friends. And okay. That night, I had met the other boy, and this is not my first time meeting him, but this is the first time we ever had sex. Now we get to meet this other mystery man. What a tale about lovers we get to hear. It looks like she had a little affair with the other man to get back at Mr. Johnson for leaving her. After she found out she was pregnant, she equally told Mr. X about it and how there's a possibility he's the father. However, Ms. Short really believes in her heart that Mr. Johnson is the father. Did you realize Ms. Short was even pregnant? See, Your Honor, I was away. I found out she was pregnant six months into her pregnancy. Okay. And were you informed that you were the biological father? Yes, ma'am. She told my mom that she was pregnant and I could be the father. So why, at the time, I'm thinking that the baby's mine. The spotlight is on Mr. Johnson. After finding out quite late that she was pregnant, he was ready to accept the baby as his own and be a father. However, for God knows what reason, Ms. Short's friends told him about Mr. X and how there's a high possibility Mr. Johnson is not the father. You know how that making me feel. I was there to see the baby could see. I was the one that had the baby. I was there. When she called me and asked me for stuff, I was there to help her. I was there. Her own mother was not in the, hotel, in the hospital room with her when I she sure had her baby. I sure wasn't, because I, I wasn't happy about the situation. Well, it don't matter. You it does her. matter. I, you I, just I, full of it. You I is, full of too. It, honey. You, Ladies, you very Okay, full okay, of it. to the moms, hold on. Let this, young man, not today. Let this young man talk. What an interesting turn of events. Mr. Johnson adds that he is ready to be there for the baby if it's his, but he just has too many doubts at the moment. As it would turn out, Ms. Short's friend, who went around telling everyone about the second father, is not who we think she is. He may not be the child's father? Your Honor, it was an ex-friend. I thought she was my friend. She was like, because I was like, it was a possibility. So I was like, I'm scared to let the moms know. She was like, you need to let them know so it won't be any confusions when the baby get here. After that, I called her and I said, it's a possibility that Mr. Johnson can be the father of my son. After telling Mr. Johnson's mother about the baby, she came to support Ms. Short alongside her son with two boxes of Pampers at the baby shower. This gesture hurt Ms. Short's mother because raising baby Jabari is really expensive. And according to her, this is the only way they have shown any form of support so far. It's been a struggle. Let me tell you, I've been raising him. 
I've been doing the best I can. It's very, very expensive. I guess he have babies for trophies. They, he don't pay child support for none of his kids. And I didn't go for child none support. None of them. So it's, this so, has been very difficult on you to have been... to raise the child without any financial support from a father. Apparently, while all of this was going on, Ms. Short's mother was actively preventing Mr. Johnson from seeing Ms. Short. It's common knowledge at this point that she's not a fan of the man, but that's not the entire story. She threatened to call the police on him as well if he came over again. Now she's bringing him to court, telling him to step up. What a woman. I love I want to say is I just want to know the truth for if he is mine, I will be there for him. And I want, I just don't want to be in the midst of this is that, that's that. I don't want to be in the midst. I just want to know the truth. That's all I want to know. So he's almost two now. Who's been his father? My mom, my dad, my sister and my family, it's just been my family. What a supportive family, really. Mr. Johnson, on the other hand, is saying that he will indeed step up when he sees he is the father. Afterwards, Judge Lake says the one thing that has been at the tip of all our tongues. I have done my best to be patient. I have been frustrated. I have been trying to be compassionate because you all are young people, and now you've gotten yourself into this whole big drama with adult situations and adult problems. You can't even string two good sentences together in this courtroom about the situation. She took it right out of our mouths. A teenager and a 20-year-old are in court to determine the paternity results for a 21-month-old baby. That means Mr. Johnson was a teenager, too, when he had relations with Ms. Short. However, Judge Lake is not done with all she has to say. The conversation that ensues is mind-blowing. So Johnson, you say you got more than one child. How many children do you have? I have four. I, with Jabari, I have five and all. So you got four other children. Yes, ma'am. And Jabari would make five. Yes, ma'am. Can I? And you're 20 now? years old. All these uh -uh. are not kids. You want? Them. They're not his. They're not his. I wish they can do blood tests too, but they don't want to. Well, oh boy, oh boy. Judge Lake is on a roll. So when exactly did Mr. It's Hot in My Pants start having children? This is definitely something. To be the father means that you admittedly slept with these women without protection, because if you use protection, you would know that's not me. Hmm. Right. And so that goes back to my point of you all are young people, potentially five children at 20 years old. That's unacceptable. You all aren't dating anymore, are you? No, Your Honor. Now, finally, the results are out. Everyone's on the edge of their seats, and we're ready to hear the verdict. Mr. Johnson, you are the father. <laughs> I'm glad you will. This is all I just want. This is all I want to know to get all the other extra stuff out of the way. You it have to. Have it shouldn't have took this. It's, but no, no, Miss Short, I it, 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 this happens in life. Yes. It should not have taken this. Lorraine and her mother, Miss Gant, are in court today to prove that Mr. Booker is the biological father of Lorraine Booker. 34-year-old Lorraine begins saying that her childhood was filled with pain and bullying. The only man she has in her life is her father, and all she's asking for is his love. Mr. Booker is not having any of it as he believes that he's just a good man who's getting taken advantage of. Mr. Booker, you say you're just a good man who's getting taken advantage of. You claim the plaintiffs know you have a good heart and a heavy wallet, and you can not give any more money to a child who does not belong to you. Is that That's correct? correct? Your Honor, yes. It gets even more interesting. We get to find out why exactly they're having this conversation after 34 years of Lorraine's life. And it's not pretty. It's about money, Your Honor. He told me that he'd write me out his will if he even found out that I was his daughter or not. Wait, I, I, but all of these years, you believe this man was your biological father? Yes, I did. I mean, he helped my mom raise me up until now. Now, all of a sudden, you know, it's like I'm not his kid. Well, oh boy, now that we see that it's about the money from one side of the story, it's time we heard from both sides. Mr. Booker had a lot to say on the matter. So, Mr. Booker, is it about the will? Part of it is, yes. It is? Yes. And do you also agree that she's 34 years old and you know that it was her understanding that you her biological father? Your Honor, I raised Lorraine and my other daughter, Rashida, mainly by myself the last part of their lives. Miss Gann was nowhere in the picture. Now, as far as the will is concerned, yes, if Lorraine is not my biological daughter. Now, we see it's all about money intentionally from both parties. Even if he raised Lorraine as his child, he's never thought of her as his own, he said. What a thing to say after 34 years. Here's a little rewind into the past. Now the light is on Ms. Gant and Mr. Booker, and here's the tea. In a relationship with Ms. Gant? Yes, Your Honor. We had a relationship. We lived together. I came home from work one day during a lunch break. I saw a guy come out of my apartment building. That's not true. Running, you know, fast. Fastening his pants up. I, yeah, 
yes. I get upstairs. I say to Miss Gann, I said, who was that that came out of our apartment? She says, oh, that was from the lady from next door, and that wasn't from the lady next door. The following month, Ms. Gant became pregnant. Ms. Gant denies every single accusation of being with another man. She says that she did tell him about how Lorraine indeed isn't his. She adds that she says it only to punish him since he knows he would be bothered about a baby. He's used to not being his. Did you say that, Ms. Gant? Uh, yes, ma'am. You know, you know how to push buttons. He had pushed some buttons on me, and I turned around and pushed buttons on him because I knew if I said something about his daughter, that would make him mad. He has uh, get child support on me. He sold my house for back child support and made me home. What a guy. After they broke up, Mr. Booker took physical custody of Lorraine. Because of this, Mrs. Gant had to pay child support to him. That's how he got custody of her money too. Meanwhile, with all of this happening, young Lorraine thought she was simply living with her father. But oh, you did not see the next bit coming. When I was uh, in high school, I was pregnant. I got pregnant at 16. And I didn't know how to tell him that. He, he ever, he told me and my sister Rashida that um, if we was to ever get pregnant, that we was grown and we would have to move out. So when I told him that I was pregnant, he was like, well, you know, I don't, I don't really think you're my daughter anyway. Lorraine adds that he kept telling her that his other daughter is his favorite child. As a defense, he'll add that every parent has a favorite. favorite. What I understand is she felt left out all of these years. She felt like she that. was not your favorite. You are now validating that feeling that she, she was not your favorite. Do you believe this choice that Rashida or this uh, your other daughter was your favorite was rooted not just in the fact that she was your firstborn, but that you believe that she was your true biological child and you believe Ms. Booker was not. Well, the DNA test results are out. Let's get to the bottom of this mystery once and for all. Mr. Booker, you are the father. Yes! Woo! Yes! I told you! 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 I didn't mess around. I apologize. Sorry. I love you. Oh, no. Come here to me. Ms. Crow is in court today to prove the paternity of her two-year-old son, Thomas. The potential father, J.C. Turner, is deceased, and in his place stands his mother, Mrs. Reinhardt, in court. Ms. Crow needs her son to at least know who his father is. Mrs. Reinhardt is not having any of it, as she keeps sabotaging all her efforts, calling the baby's mother a liar and manipulator. You say Ms. Crow used your son for money when he was alive, and now it's trying to claim him as her son's father only to get death benefits. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Crow Bro, are you doing this just for the money? It is more than just the money. I would like help with my son, yes, of course, but my son cannot grow up and meet his father. Baby Thomas currently has no knowledge of his father, apart from the few times when Ms. Crow spoke to the late J.C. Turner over the phone. When Mrs. Reinhardt was asked about the origin of her doubts, here is what she had to say. In the time period, the time frame she said she was, when she told me she was pregnant, it didn't happen that way. There's no way she could have been just two weeks pregnant and had a stomach firm as she did. You're saying she couldn't have a stomach as firm? I mean, after two weeks, you, you don't have a stomach as firm as that. And so she had just met your son? You were meeting her for the first time? Isn't that interesting? She added that her son had a very tight relationship with her and she knew him inside and out. J.C. Turner told her everything, even when nobody else was around. My son and I had a very tight relationship. And Jay would tell me everything when nobody else was around. I knew my son inside and out. And I, ju I, I just don't, as a mother, as a grandmother, having four babies of my own, my gut tells me this is not my grandson. I do not see my son in that. Looks like we just have to find out if her gut is right or her spidey senses are acting up. Ms. Crow gives more insight on the nature of their relationship and how they met. You talk to me about the relationship. Um, when I first met Jay, we were at a skate park. I noticed him in the parking lot and I called him over to me and we had a conversation. From that conversation, we ended up walking to the store. We had, you know, became inseparable. We, you know, developed, you know, feelings and it did happen all too fast. He did ask me to be his girlfriend and we did have unprotected sex. What a fast one right there. Once she told him about the pregnancy, he was happy about the thought of having a child. According to Ms. Crow, he never denied Thomas. He never denied my son and if he was here today, we wouldn't have to be here because he would willingly do so. He never said anything rude or disrespectful to me. He was nice to me. He was very accepting. He knew this was his child. Um, we were together every day. He'd have believed you if you told him the sky was purple. Well, that's he your own opinion. 
He That's only your had own the opinion. mental capacity of a 16-year-old. Mrs. Reinhardt says that her son did not have the discernment to say that Thomas was not his son. The funniest thing then ensues. I've got a baby picture. If you, and if I take that baby picture, I could put it up against my daughter. I could even put it up against my 18-year-old granddaughter. I could put it up against Jay's brother. I could put it up against Jay's baby picture, okay? And we all look like quadruplets. I have strong genes. So, Ms. Crow, you say your genes are strong as well. Do you see a resemblance to his dad? Mrs. Reinhardt's point is that Thomas does not look like said baby picture. And I mean, if I were a betting man, I'd put some money on the fact that there is some semblance between these two. But here we go again with the semblance issue. And so when Thomas was born, did JC accept the baby as his own? He told everybody that we would come across, friends, even people we didn't know he had conversations with. She's pregnant with my baby. He's really happy. He's excited. Um, he never denied my child and he I knew for a fact that you know he's the father they broke up afterwards and went their separate ways because JC Turner was in the care of Miss Crow for that time period she tried contacting his mother via social media but got no response all I know is I saw a picture on Facebook of another man that my she boyfriend was with. that's not his father he was Jamaican does he look half Jamaican and you know I lost my father the same year my son lost his father so there's no reason why I would be up here for no reason I'm doing this for my son son. My son has the right to know and Jay has, you know, health issues. JC passed on the same week Thomas turned one. After he met baby Thomas at three months old, he didn't see him after they broke up. Ms. Crow didn't see him as well. This is what happened. I didn't have a phone number. He didn't have no way to contact me. I didn't even know he was still here until I'm scrolling down my newsfeed on Facebook and I see a mutual friend of ours post rest in peace Jay with his picture. And I contacted this person like what's going on and they tell me so I'm wondering to make sure it's true i call the coroner's office is it true you have jc turner there yes it is true mrs reinhardt has another story to tell which doesn't exactly align with mrs crow's this is the interesting thing she told the court do you know where any of his family's at because he don't have family out here I like that told her he passed away i and she talked called to the, the coroner's she office they the said they haven't even talked to her behind my back to get a sample of his dna your honor oh no ma'am she didn't even have the decency to bring it to me i called her and asked Asked her. She denied no. it. That's why no. we're here today. What a dramatic exchange. Now, who do we believe? Mrs. Reinhardt with her gut feeling or Ms. Crow with baby Thomas? Back to the T. It's quite interesting that Ms. Crow wants Thomas to meet his father after letting him be MIA for nine months after Thomas turned three months old till he was one year old. I lost my father on the third month of that year and the father of my son the seventh month of that year. I was going through stuff my own self. I have a seven-year-old daughter. I have a four-year-old daughter got to make sure my daughter goes to school got to make sure there's food on the table I have to make sure of all of these things and I didn't even have a job at the time but my kids were taken care of I took care of my kids. I guess the question then becomes oh boy judge Lake has some important questions to add to the mix mrs. Reinhardt is up and ready to listen to ms. Crow's response as well how do you lose track of your child's biological father how well, do you not attend somebody's memorial when they're given a memorial of their death because you're your daughter has school the next day and you can't get a babysitter? Um, no, you that was what you guys did. No, I went to I the skate park proof. where I, I met him. Proof. Oh boy, oh boy. Now it seems like the line between her intentions and the death benefits are getting quite blurry. Let's hear what she has to say. For two hours with his best I friend. I didn't want to go and, and be around you. You see how you act? So you're saying, Miss Crow, you purposely did not go to the memorial service because you didn't want to have an encounter, a negative encounter or altercation. Right, because I'm already upset. Everybody's upset and doesn't, nobody needs that extra drama. Well, oops. In addition, in addition to all the drama, it turns out that Mrs. Reinhardt has never seen Thomas before. Finally, the results of the test are out, because there was no blood card available to do a DNA test with the deceased J.C. Turner. A DNA test was performed with the surviving parent, Mrs. Reinhardt. The results were as follows. Turns out her gut wasn't so right after all. The relatedness between Ms. Reinhardt and Thomas Crow is 99.6% you are related. That is your grandchild. Ms. Reinhardt, you have never laid eyes on your grandchild. 20-year-old Ms. Hillman is in court with her mother to prove the paternity of her 13-month-old son, Demarcus. She says that Mr. O'Neill, the potential father, has done absolutely nothing for the baby. Mr. O'Neill, as expected, is having none of it. Ms. Hillman, 
What type of relationship does Mr. O'Neill have with your son? Well, Your Honor, he don't do nothing for him. They don't have no relationship together. Like when, like when I, like when I hold him, Your Honor, and my baby go to reach for him, he ignore him. Does he provide for the baby financially? No, he don't do nothing. My, my mom and the baby's godmother is the one that actually helps me with everything. What an extraordinary man. As it would turn out, his previous experience with another woman is keeping him on his toes. He admits to not doing anything for baby DeMarcus, and he means it. He states that he is 100% sure that he is not the father of the baby. With such an exemplary man, how on earth did they meet? This is the nature of their relationship. The first night we met, you know, we chilled, okay, da da da. He told me, like, he told me I was his girlfriend. He didn't ask me like he told me. He demanded that, okay, you're my girlfriend, we're together. So the second, so the second night, me, me, him, and the same two mutual friends, we got together, we chilled. That's when, like, I conceived Demarcus. Second night, though. What an interesting outburst. First, he demanded that she be his girlfriend, and now he's saying in court that she was not hard to get. What kind of show does Mr. O'Neill think this is? Ms. Hillman had a response for him. Don't, don't sit all. Don't, don't stand and try to do it because I just I the first, woman that the first night, man, you met, you sat in our car and you begged, literally, you begged for it. Don't try it. Mr. O'Neill says that he does not believe he's the only person she's sleeping with, since she agreed to have relations with him just two nights after they met. He also even thinks she was already pregnant before she met him. Isn't that something? You all met, and very well, quickly you, you said you wanted to be in a relationship with Miss Hillman. Is that correct, Mr. O'Neill? Yes, Your Honor. And so you did tell her, okay, we, we're in a relationship now, and you all were having sex. Were you using protection? No. No. So no, I don't know. wasn't needle. What other what man? Other she man? was with you. She was with you because y'all was at my house. Who knows? Perhaps Mr. O'Neill goes out each night to save the world and spots Ms. Hillman with all her other men. Who knows, really? Mr. O'Neill has another wild response for the court. Love at first sight, that's what he told me. And then me. on top of that, the first time me and him with those mutual friends ever chill, it was at my mom's house. And I wish I would've kept walking. What? You, but you did You weren't even walking. You wasn't walking. You, you was you on was the riding. passenger seat. And I wish I would've kept riding mm, along. You a scrub, them. cause you was on the passenger seat. Of course, he wishes he kept riding along. Babies are called the consequences of your actions for a reason, Mr. O'Neill. Maybe next time he wouldn't be so quick to declare random women as his girlfriend. Mr. O'Neill mentioned that some random man at the park walked up to him to ask if he was Ms. Hillman's baby daddy. He said yes. You man. told the man yes? At the time, until he got a little older. And then when he got older, what happened? He started not looking like me. Oh. He oh. Me. <laughs> you, you, look, look at that. And look at yourself in the mirror. He look like you. He like all your family. All y'all got big eyes, big lips, big nose. <laughs> look at the cheeks. He got bags on his eyes just like you and your mama. He says he does not want to become too attached to baby DeMarcus in case it's not his baby. Mr. O'Neill has been through this before, and he is not ready to face that pain again. Now, the results are finally out, and everyone gets to hear the verdict. Mr. O'Neill, you are the father. Ah! You did all, you did all that. Can you, I see him? Miss Hillman, would it Can be okay if Mr. O'Neill saw his son? That's fine. I'm happy. I, you look happy. I'm so happy, I wanna cry. Mr. Wheat was definitely an emotional man. He was in court to express his sadness and how he felt he had been robbed of being a father to a child he claimed was his. He wanted nothing more than to make up for lost time with his daughter. But Ms. Greider, the child's mother, claimed she had her facts right. Mr. Wheat, you filed your case because you claim you've been robbed as a father. You are desperate to prove to the defendant that you fathered her 19-year-old daughter, Sierra Sloan, and once you do, you want to make up for lost time. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. The first statement that dropped from his mouth was that he believed he was the father. He wanted to reunite her with her other siblings and couldn't wait for her to call him daddy. He claimed any time he thought about the time he wasn't present in her life, it broke his heart. I believe she is mine, so I want her to make up for all the lost time so she can meet her sisters. And so what does it feel like knowing that you may have missed 19 years of your daughter's life? It's... Hurtful, very hurtful. Do you think about all of the times of her life you've missed, the important moment? Yes. As much as she wanted Mr. Wheat to be her daughter's father, she just couldn't lie about her facts and she knew he wasn't the father. She claimed that back when she was 19 years old, she was around so many men and did so many stupid things. Because I was 19, I was young, dumb, and full of eggs, and I was having doing me. <laughs> young, 
dumb and full of eggs and doing me. I don't think I've ever heard it explained like that. <laughs> oh. Okay. Now, when Ms. Grider found out she was pregnant, Mr. Wheat never got to know about the news. In fact, the news came to him as a surprise. After having a one-night stand with Ms. Grider, someone walked up to him months later and asked him if he was excited to be a father. Kinda had a one-night stand. And I don't know how many more months later, I found out she was pregnant. Uh, her friend of hers come up to me and says, how does it feel that you're about to be a dad? Really? And so did you confront Ms. Grider? Yes. Well, we didn't confront her, I talked, we talked about it. She goes, yes, there is a possibility that you are our father. At the time when Ms. Greider's daughter was conceived, she was intimate with four different men. I mean, we need all the juice from her story, right? She began to go into detail about how she ended up sleeping with four different men, and trust me, it was crazy. One of them was my boyfriend. He was living with me at the time, and he went away. And then uh, Mac had moved in with me. I met him through a mutual friend of all of ours, and yes, we were sleeping together. And then I had went out to Texas Nightlife and saw David, and had a one night stand with him at that time. Ms. Greider eventually got pregnant and she did something really interesting. She told the four different men she was sleeping with that she was pregnant and that there was a chance that one out of the four of them could be the potential father to her baby. I confronted Mac and David and told them, told all of them, all so four of them. You really. told them all? Yes. Listen, I'm pregnant and you could I've... possibly be the father. Yes, I told all four of them. All right, so in the beginning, you did tell Mr. Wheat you could be my daughter's biological father, my child's yes. biological father. Things start to get a little tricky in the courtroom. Ms. Grider finally gives birth to her baby, and she's asked who was with her through the process. Guess what? It wasn't Mr. Wheat. It happened that one of the men she was intimate with was present throughout the childbirth process, and he also believes he is the father of the baby. Who was with you when she was born? Mac Grider. Ah, now I get it. So the man you were with went through the process with you. Yes, Your Honor. So Mr. Weed, it kind of left you as odd man out because she was with this guy. You were just the one night stand. And even though you knew you were a possibility, you didn't feel like you really had any standing. Yes, Your Honor. Guess who was around in the courtroom? Mr. Grider, the other man, who also believes he is a potential father to Ms. Grider's child. And that wasn't the only mind-blowing thing. Ms. Grider and Mr. Grider were actually married at one point in time. What was your relationship with the defendant? She is my ex-wife. She's your ex-wife. All right. So do you think you are Sierra's, Ms. Sloan's biological father? There is a possibility. Me and Charlene were sleeping together and staying in the same house, and we used to having sex more than another guy. The daughter in question was devastated by the entire situation. I mean, who wouldn't be? She had two different men in the courtroom fighting for the position of being her father, and to make things worse, her mother wasn't even sure which of the men was her actual dad. Upset that I never knew who my real dad was. And when you say you never knew, Never. You were always told that it was uncertain. I've had a father figure throughout the years and he's watched me grow up and never really knew who my dad was. Oh, okay. Well, it's time we brought the cartoons down on this story of deception and uncertainty, wouldn't you say? It was time to find out the truth and know if the craziness was all worth it. The moment of truth is here, people. Brace yourselves for the result. Mr. Grider, you are not the father. I'm very sorry, Mr. Grider. I still love her no matter what. Mr. Wheat, you are not the father. I'm very sorry, Sierra. Mr. Williams claimed that from the moment he saw Ms. Mayberry, he automatically believed she was his daughter. Even though the defendant was claiming he wasn't the father of her child, he hoped the DNA results would prove her wrong. Ms. Wynn, the defendant, claimed she never gave Mr. Williams a reason to believe or think he could be her daughter's father. Mr. Williams, from the moment you saw Quinesha Mayberry, you believe that she is your biological daughter. Even though the defendant claimed you are not. You hope to Today's results prove what you have known for 35 years. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Well, it was storytelling time, and Mr. Williams was asked to explain how he felt when he found out Miss Cree. Williams was his daughter. He claimed everything just made sense after he met her. She looked just like him. Her color tone matched his, and for him, that was enough proof. It was the first time I saw her. You know, she just, she looked like me, fair skin, and I just, I just knew she was my daughter. And when was this, sir? When she, um, about a week after she was born. 
Oh, right after she was born. Yes. You looked at her and you said, this is my daughter. Yep. Because you felt like she looked like you. Well, she's fair skinned. I was fair skinned. Her mom is dark and the other guy, he's darker. One thing was certain though, Ms. Wynn wasn't bothered by any of Mr. Williams' feelings. She stood her ground and was insistent that she was very certain he wasn't her biological father. Which then begs the question, how did the mix up happen? Why do they both feel differently? He's not her father, Your Honor. Color don't mean nothing. You know, because he light skin and she light skin, the other guy is dark skin, I'm dark skin. That don't prove that he's her father. It sure does. I know who's her father. Well, it's and different it's not, when you got... It's not Stanley. Well, Garner. he seems pretty certain that it is, and I would like to hear his testimony. I want to start with the nature of your relationship. Everyone needed to understand what kind of relationship they had to begin with. Mr. Williams claimed that after trying so hard to get his attention, he and Ms. Wynn finally got into a sexual relationship. He admitted it wasn't a romantic one, though, but they definitely slept together a couple of times. They just walk in front of the door to get my attention. <laughs> And so, you know, we end up, you know, we did mess around, but it was never a relationship. So how long did this sexual relationship last? Uh, I don't remember, like four or five months, something like that. All right. So, Ms. Wynn, how do you remember your relationship with Mr. Williams? Can you take me back? I don't. I don't remember. After Mr. Williams gave a vivid account of how and when they had their sexual encounters, Ms. Wynn went on to shock the entire courtroom. She claimed she couldn't remember ever sleeping with me. Williams, she claimed there was no memory of something like that ever happening in her entire life. I'm trying to get to, do you remember him asking you on a date or meeting up with him later? Your Honor, I don't remember none of it. And if Stanley knew he was to feel that he was a father, he could have been did this test. He used to come get her, take her over to his house. He could have did it then. Well, if you didn't you want to wait I... 35 years to do this now? If you didn't think I was, why would you let me take your baby? I didn't have a problem. I didn't have a problem. Ms. Vin's story just wasn't making any sense. She kept denying that she ever slept with Mr. Williams. Mr. Williams then went on to drop a revelation where he claimed he would always go to pick up Ms. Mayberry from her mother's house. And when Mr. Williams showed his mother the child, she told him Ms. Mayberry looked just like him. And no pictures with her being a newborn. Not with newborns, but I had I used to go get her all the time. It was once I came and got her for like my nieces and nephews' birthday parties. I used to to go get her so she can come and play with the other kid. And I will keep her the duration of the party. How long did that last? How often was that? Well, it wasn't often because I lost contact I lost contact with them for a long time. Ms. Mayberry claimed she knew another man to be her father because her mother told him that was her father and he was the one who signed the birth certificate. But deep down in her heart, she felt he wasn't her father because they didn't bond and connect on so many levels and she met him just twice. Um, the man that signed my birth certificate, like, uh, I'm, I met him like twice. I don't feel like we have a connection. I, I definitely don't look like him. I really don't feel like that's my father. Oh, you had no connection with him? Nope. And you've only seen him like two times? And that was when I was like 18. So. Yeah, I've been mom and dad to her. And I'm still mom and dad. Anytime people around asked Mr. Williams if Ms. Mayberry was his daughter, he never denied her. He would always tell them she was his daughter, but he remembered a situation where another man claimed to be her father as well. Yeah, that's how I addressed her. I, when everybody, anybody asked me about her, I'll say this is my daughter. Was anybody else saying this is my daughter? It was uh, um, one situation where I went over to her house and um, her and the guy, supposed to be her dad, was sitting on the porch and I walked past him and I went in the house. It's been a bumpy and funny ride with Mr. Williams and Ms. Wynn. We need to find out the truth, don't we? All eyes are on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Mr. Williams, you are not the father. I'm very sorry. I'm sorry I could not give you the closure you needed. Ms. Wynn, can you remember, identify, think about any other person you may have been dating at that time? Let's just say, as far as this case was concerned, there was trouble in their little paradise. Mrs. Cohen was present in court to prove to her husband that he is the father of her one-year-old son. If it happened that Mr. Cohen wasn't the father of the child, she was definitely going to kiss her marriage goodbye. Mrs. Cohen, you have opened your case to prove to your husband that he is the father of your one-year-old son, Kyrie. You say your marriage is on the verge of divorce because Mr. Cohen chooses to deny your young son. Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Cohen wanted nothing more than for the results to show that her husband was the father of her child. She told the courtroom that Mr. Cohen was already on full throttle toward getting a divorce, and she was trying to save her marriage. She even claimed they've been high school sweethearts for as long as she can remember. 
Right now, I'm trying to save my marriage because we are on the verge of divorce. Um, I want to prove to him that he is the father of our one-year-old son. Um, he's my high school sweetheart. We met in the 10th grade. We started dating. We've been together for seven years, married for three, and I just really want to prove to him and his family members that he is the father of our one-year-old son. Mr. Cohen, on his end, could not hide the fact that he was also very hurt by the situation. He couldn't believe that he was the one standing in paternity court, trying to determine if he was the real father of his child. I mean, if I were in his shoes, I would probably feel the same way. I'm just really hurt right now that we had to come this far to get these answers. And I have had lots of doubt about Kyrie, and it will really hurt if that does come back. He's not my child today. It really hurt. And I love my wife, and I want us to be together forever, but I can't get past this if. After both of them had expressed to the court how the whole situation made them feel sad, it was time to get down to the real business. The judge asked Mr. Cohen how he found out his wife cheated on him, and he blew the minds of everyone in the courtroom. Me and Jasmine, we broke up. We said we was gonna be done with each other for good. We were still living under the same roof in the same house. Going into May, we began to have sex again, all that good stuff. Um, I, I went through Jasmine's phone one day after we got back together and her phone was locked. She had a passcode on it. Let's just say he didn't really trust his wife as much as you would expect him to. He claimed that while she was sleeping like a baby during one of those cozy nights, he unlocked her phone and found a secret that shattered his heart. I was about to lock the phone. Right when I was about to lock the phone, I opened up the notes in her phone. And I seen my name at the top. I was like, let me click on this note. Why is my name there? I clicked on the note and there was two other names under my name. I instantly realized that was the people Jasmine had been into with because my name was first, which I took Jasmine's virginity. The story he was telling the judge got even crazier. After playing Inspector Gadgets, he found the man Mrs. Cohen had slept with. Being that his mind wasn't settled, he texted the guy and told him he was about to have a baby. The guy replied and said he slept with his wife only once, and there was no way he could be a father. I went in his DMs. I, How do you know it was the guy? I actually, I went into his DMs and I, I was like, you're having a baby, sir. And he replied back to me, acting like he knew exactly who I was. He was like, no, I only slept with her one time, and that's not my child. She told me nothing about her being pregnant or anything, and then he blocked me, so there was no to father. To be fair, I was already pregnant when I slept with him. Well, the judge had to face Mrs. Cohen and hear her side of the story because her husband had uncovered a lot. Apparently, she didn't deny it, though. She said she met the guy at community service, and that's when one thing led to the next, and they had a sexual experience. Um, We were on a break. He went to go stay with a, one of his family members, and I had to do community service, and I met him at community service. And he was just telling me that I'm beautiful and all this other stuff. That right there, I don't know. I, was he doing that voluntarily? <laughs> or was he ordered to community service? There's a difference. He was ordered, but, um... Mrs. Cohen wasn't denying the fact that what she did was horrible, but she blamed her husband for it. She claimed her husband made her feel so low by choosing to sleep with other women outside of their relationship, and all she did was have her revenge. Oh, to be fair, I was getting him back. That's all that was. He was cheating, and he made... He, my husband's made me feel so low. Like, he's chosen females over me plenty of times. So it was my time to get back at him, so I was just doing what I wanted to do. Was the sex unprotected? With who? With the community service oh. guy. <gasps> Yes. After going back and forth with the cheating story, Mr. Cohen finally admitted why he had doubts that the baby wasn't his. He claimed to have a disease that made him incapable of fathering a child, which his wife was quite aware of. I have um, type 2 diabetes, and I was actually, I didn't have no insurance at the time, so it was uncontrolled, meaning my sugars were always high. So every time I would ejaculate, my semen would become weird, and it wouldn't, it can't travel. Right. It, it... So how do I get pregnant, Quarry? Well, I was about to say, you all do have another child together, right? Yes, Your Honor. The suspense is finally over, and the hassle of who the dad of their child is is about to be revealed. It's been a bumpy and funny ride with Mr. Cohen and his wife. All eyes are on the judge as she unleashes the truth. Mr. Cohen, you are the father. Oh, my God, I'm so happy. <laughs> Everybody's the father. Be, be quiet. You can stand with your wife. You can stand with your husband. I'll tell you, I mean, some of the best life lessons 
come from the hugest mistakes. Ms. Ramirez dragged her ex-boyfriend to court to prove to him that he was the father of her baby. She claimed she was tired of him always denying that he wasn't the father, and all she wanted him to do was step up. Mr. Jordan claimed he was nowhere around Ms. Ramirez during her window of conception, so he can't be the father. Ms. Ramirez, you have dragged your ex-boyfriend to court because you are tired of him denying your four-month-old daughter, Mila, and you're hoping today's results will make him finally step up. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Ramirez wasted no time in talking about how he hasn't been there for her child. She claims she has been the one single-handedly taking care of both her kids, and she doesn't understand why Mr. Jordan doesn't want to help out. Uh, he's never provided diapers, wipes, formula, nothing. I I take care of not only her, but my other two children as well um, by myself. No help, and there hasn't been help for at least over two years now. Are you avoiding responsibility, Mr. Jordan? No, Your Honor. Well, Mr. I. Jordan also had some truth bombs to reveal to the court. He claimed their relationship had been over for quite some time, and the only reason he kept in touch with her was because they had other kids together. Well, she, I mean, the relationship was non-existent. I had moved on, so there was no, I mean, we, we kept in touch every now and then because I have two kids with her, and I just called for the kids. But besides that, I mean, I had moved on, and... <laughs> There's not much to it besides that. So you were already living in another state yep. and had moved on. Yep. Which is why you say you are not Mila's biological father. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mr. Jordan wasn't the only one who had things to reveal to the courtroom. Ms. Ramirez claimed that on some occasions, when Mr. Jordan came over to visit his other kids, they would usually have unprotected sex, and she told him she wanted another baby with him. And um, I had told him that I wanted another child with him, and uh, he's even said that, you know, if a woman says that, you know, he want, they, if they want another child or a child with him, that he feels the need that he has to. Oh, what? what? That's not true, bro. Yes, he no, has. Don't pay attention to that. But your Honor, I just want to say also, when I broke up with her, I had found like sex messages with other dudes. That's, I mean, that was like when, when I decided to. It was now a battle of who had the best proof to show the judge. Ms. Ramirez showed the courtroom a calendar of the period she conceived her baby, and it placed Mr. Jordan as the man she was sleeping with. Mr. Jordan said that was not true. He submitted his own evidence, which stated that he wasn't even around the period she claimed she was intimate with him. You say you got pregnant? Yes. Well, Mr. Jordan, if we count back, that looks like it adds up. Nah, um, Your Honor, that's not, she's lying. Cause I have proof, <laughs> I have proof right here that I was in Georgia, I got a pay stub. I, if I could submit this to, from Yes, I'd like working. to see that. Jerome, yeah. will you hand me that evidence, please? Uh, yeah. So this is proof that- I was working in Georgia. You were working in Georgia. Mm -hmm. Aside from submitting his evidence in the courtroom, he brought a witness who was going to prove he wasn't the father of her child. Trust me, Mr. Jordan came very prepared for anything that was going to happen in the courtroom. The witness happened to be Mr. Jordan's babysitter, who is also pregnant with him. First and foremost, of course, um, and ended up being his babysitter for his second child that he has, Adrian, for a few months, actually, while he was in Georgia. But now you're dating him and actually having his other baby, right? So, how do you know Mr. Jordan is not Mila's biological father? Well, all hell broke loose after the babysitter, or should I say baby mama, walked into the courtroom. Apparently, Ms. Ramirez had been lying all this time. She didn't reveal to the court that she had been intimate with another man who wasn't Mr. Jordan. You have not testified to that in this courtroom. <laughs> but I have said that I slept with him, that there's, he is another possibility, but he's, it's like a 95 to 5% um, possibility. What math are you doing in here? <laughs> Judge Lauren was getting tired of her lies, and trust me, if you were in the courtroom, I'm sure you would feel the exact same way. The other guy in the picture, who also happens to be a potential father, believes he is the father of her child. He knows he's a possibility. That, and that's that's what I've told him. He's only a possibility. So, Ms. Ramirez, tell the truth, because do I even need to go to this envelope? I mean, you're talking in circles so much, I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> what is the truth? Uh, the truth This looks is... like a man holding his baby. He's not the father. I just, like I said, he's just a possibility. Well, there's only one way to end this plot twist and series of lies that Ms. Ramirez has been telling the courtroom. The results from the DNA test are in, and it's time to reveal the truth as to the question of who the real father is. I hope we're all ready, because here it comes. Mr. Jordan, you are the father. <laughs> I don't know the results, but I saw that one coming through like a Mack truck. You're right, she was gonna be upset if she found out that she was yours. 
This relationship is very messy. I think everybody has their little piece. All right, folks, let's set the scene. We've got Mr. Lawrence, our main man, who just found out that his best friend of 10 years dropped a bombshell on him. She believes he might be the father of her three-year-old son, Antonio Chandler. It's a not-so-classic case of best friends turned potential baby mama and baby daddy. I'll well, wait three years to tell me, and he called the other guy daddy. As you look at this calendar, do you see how you fit in this picture? He called me a liar, a whore. What kind of best friend relationship is this? Now, well, it's time for the results. Mr. Lawrence, you are... So, Mr. Lawrence gets a call out of the blue from his bestie, Miss Payne, who tells him that the court is about to hit him up for a paternity test. Mr. Lawrence dove right into denial mode. As far as he knew, Antonio already had a father. And you know what? He had a point. This little munchkin is named after another man. So why would Miss Payne wait so long to spill the beans? The court is gonna call you for a paternity test. I say, for what? She said, for, for Antonio. I said, Antonio already got a father already. So I said, why would, you, why would you wait so long to tell me that I need to take a paternity test? So she's like, no, um, we had sex a long time ago or whatever. I'm like, no, that's not the case. So I hung up the phone, I got time for it. Right. I said, I'm not finna talk, I'm not finna do Did nothing. Did you have sex with her? Yeah, I had sex with her. Exactly, you are the father. Let's hear it from the lady herself. Miss Payne, why did she keep this secret from her bestie for so long? Apparently she was scared, scared of how he might react. She loves him, but she didn't want him acting up like he's doing right now. You held this secret all this time from your very best friend? What? Yes, your honor. I was, I was, I was scared. I, it was all kind of emotions going through my mind. I didn't wanna, this is my best friend and I love him. I didn't wanna throw, you I love you're my you're best friend, a big I do. Like that. How you love me, you keep a big secret. Okay, so what, but I've you told you, me. instead of what you being, of and instead you of you being like the that. man. Wait a minute, folks. Mr. Lawrence just dropped a bomb of his own. He says Miss Payne kept a big secret and he's calling her out on it. This friendship is on the rocks and we may be about to witness it fall apart. And I told call. you didn't want to leave me on because you, that you had a girl. She just said I, I took her virginity. Let me tell you, Angela is lying because of the fact that I'm, I'm lying. I was out of town with the mother of my kids. She knew that. When I came back into town, I called her and told her I was coming. And when I came into town, I got on the phone like, yeah, she was like, do you want to kick it? I'm like, yeah. So I go pick her up and that same day I had sex with her. Mr. Lawrence never suspected that he might be little Antonio's daddy. He was sure that his bestie's son already had a father. But hold on, folks. There's more to this story than meets the eye. Miss Payne has some explaining to do. I do Lawrence, with, with Mr. Lawrence. Let me ask you this. She pulled the name out the sky or something. She's the father. Mr. Lawrence, why do you think she's lying? The reason why, let me tell you, Judge. One day I went out to her house. I brought some drinks out there. We get the right. drinking, you know what I mean? And so as I'm drinking, you know, one thing, she came, first of all, she came to the door with a short skirt on, you know. Okay. So. Miss Payne just dropped a bombshell of her own. She says Mr. Lawrence took her virginity and then told her the next day that he had a girlfriend. And on top of that, he denied that ever happening. I said, I'm never going over there no more. A year later, she hit me up on Facebook. She said, come out here, like to come see me, you know what I'm saying? So I went out there and seen her. This time I left the car run, you know, she came downstairs he came downstairs I don't know why you she came downstairs lying. with the baby in her hand and she could have told me right then and there you know what i'm saying as we sit in the car that this is this is my uh this is my son you know i'm holding the baby she over there cheese and carrying on you know what i'm saying so she could have just said like you're the father i think you're the father of this child and i asked and you holding the I'm baby holding, i'm holding the baby and I, you're looking at him and I'm you don't see your face no because it was kind of quick you know what i'm saying like <laughs> mr lawrence and miss Payne were now going back and forth accusing each other of lying and keeping secrets it's a he said she said situation and it's hard to know who to believe anymore. After all the mind-boggling truth bombs that were just dropped, the case quickly turned into a full-on screaming match. Last week she called me with this, saying that I could possibly be the father. So I'm like, come on now. You could have wow. told me this a long time ago. My son, he's three years old now, and he needs to know who his dad is. It's not about us, it's about him. Why wait three years to tell me, and he called the other guy daddy. What kind of best friend relationship is this now? What, what is it? Finally, the moment we've all been waiting for. The results are in, and the tension in the courtroom is palpable. Mr. Lawrence is ready to find out if he is Antonio's father, and Miss Payne is crossing her fingers, hoping that he is. Brace yourself, because it's time for the truth. Mr. Lawrence, you are not the father. Jerome, Mr. Lawrence. How you feel? I don't feel good at all, you know what I mean? I don't feel good about the situation, but I'm not the father, my father, there's nothing I can do about that. I can't just sit there and just, you know, I can't take this right now, you know what I mean? Like, you just lied all this time. We meet Jermario, who claims that his ex-girlfriend, Brittany, dropped a bombshell on him when their daughter, Serenity, turned two. He started doubting if he was her biological father. Can you imagine the shock? Miss Shank, you claim that when your daughter, Serenity, turned two, Mr. Robinson began to doubt paternity. Yes, Your Honor. And since then, you claim he's pulled away from your child and it's now breaking your heart 
to watch her suffer. Yes, Your Honor. Germario takes the stand and spills the tea. He tells the judge that he was there for Brittany throughout her pregnancy, attending every doctor's appointment like a champ. He even helped raise their other child together. But then, everything changed. However, when Ms. Shank suddenly stated you may not be her biological father and started to pursue DNA testing of another man, you pulled away. Yes, Your Honor. So you're hoping DNA results prove you are Serenity's father so you can once again feel close to your little girl. Yes, ma'am. Brittany takes the stand, and boy, does she drop a bombshell. She admits to sleeping with one of Germario's friends during the window of conception. And with that plot twist, every jaw in the courtroom just dropped. So, Ms. Shank, that happened. Yes, Your Honor. Please talk to me. Ex fill me in. When you found out you were pregnant, did you think he was the father? Or did you know right off the bat there could possibly be another father? I didn't know. When I first found out I was pregnant, um, he was there, like he said. We were in an on and off relationship. Germario's world comes crashing down as he realizes that the beautiful bond he had with Serenity might be shattered. He pulls away, leaving Brittany heartbroken and Serenity caught in the middle. It's a heartbreaking situation. So when you found out you were pregnant, did you immediately say it could be Mr. Robinson or the other guy? Or did you say to yourself, you felt like it was just Mr. Robinson because you'd only been with the other guy once? Yes, Your Honor. Was it just one time with the other guy? Yes, Your Honor. Next, we hear from Brittany's mother, Donna, who shares her own experience of dealing with a similar situation. She understands Germario's pain and hopes for a resolution that will bring peace to everyone involved. The tension just keeps on building. Okay, so you guys were on and off again, but you have another child together, and that child you say looks like him. Yes, Your Honor. Now, you say Mr. Robinson now treats baby Serenity differently than your other child. Yeah. It's the moment we've all been waiting for. The DNA results are in and the courtroom is holding its breath. Will Germario be Serenity's biological father or will their worst fears be confirmed? Let's find out. Germario Robinson is her father. <laughs> How do you feel, Mr. Robinson? I feel great. Good. I feel great. And so now when we go pick up child number one, we also get our little girl too, right? Yes, ma'am. This case revolves around Mr. Fisher and Ms. Doyle. Now, Mr. Fisher is claiming that he made the biggest mistake of his life by signing the birth certificate for two-month-old Sophia. Just one month ago, Ms. Doyle drops a confession on him that rocks his world. She admits that he may not be Sophia's father. Well, hold on to your seats because this roller coaster is about to take off. Mr. Fisher, you claim you made the biggest mistake of your life by signing the birth certificate for two-month-old month old Sophia. You say your fiance dropped a bomb on you just one month ago and admitted you may not be her father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. We meet Mr. Fisher and he is one emotional wreck. He's pouring his heart out to the judge, explaining how much he loves Ms. Doyle and little Sophia. You can see the pain etched on his face as he shares his story. He thought he had it all, the perfect relationship and a beautiful family. But then, out of nowhere, the truth came crashing down on him. Ms. Doyle, you admit to making the biggest mistake of your life by cheating on Mr. Fisher. But stand in court, hoping and praying he is Sophia's father. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Fisher, you say today's results mean everything to you. Now, let's hear from Ms. Doyle. She admits to cheating on Mr. Fisher and acknowledges that it was a huge mistake. But here's the kicker. She's standing in court, hoping and praying that Mr. Fisher is Sophia's father. This baby's life, you had no doubt. So that brand new feeling of being a dad was just ripped from you. Right down the middle. Ms. Doyle? I think that he is the father. I'm, I know 100%. I mean, he was there through the whole pregnancy, and he does everything for me. He works. He supports our family. He runs my baths. He cooks my food. Mr. Fisher is still reeling from the shock of it all. He thought he had found the love of his life, and now he's faced with the possibility that Sophia might not be his biological child. The poor guy is torn apart, and you can see the raw emotion in his eyes, but Ms. Doyle is pleading her case, telling the judge how amazing Mr. Fisher is as a father and a partner. She's laying it on thick, folks. He said, Trey's cheating on you, which we call him Trey, but his name is John. So me, I was hurt. And so I went to be by myself at the pool area where I was at at the time. And a guy walked up to me and he's like, well, you look like you need somebody to talk to. Do you want to go to my camper and talk? So, so I go back to his camper with him and we talked about it. And then one thing led to another. We were, he kissed me and then 
We had sex. According to Mr. Fisher, it was love at first sight. He met Ms. Doyle through a family member and was immediately smitten. He gushes about her beauty, her eyes, and how she treated him like a king. It sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? Your fiance described the night she had sex with another person. And you knew nothing about this until after Sophia was born. Yes, Your Honor. I can see how much that hurts you. A lot. So can you take me to the day you found out Ms. Doyle was pregnant? Fast forward to the day Ms. Doyle found out she was pregnant. Mr. Fisher was over the moon with excitement. He couldn't wait to start a family with the woman he loved. But little did he know, Ms. Doyle had a secret weighing heavily on her conscience. She had cheated on him during their relationship. It was a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. Mr. Fisher, after you find out Ms. Doyle is pregnant, what happens to your relationship? You, at that point, know nothing about the cheating. What happens in your relationship? I told her, or I, I went to work that day and I was thinking about proposing to her because I love her. She's my world. Now, this is where things start to get messy. Ms. Doyle takes a vacation with a family member, and she receives a text claiming that Mr. Fisher was cheating on her. Heartbroken and seeking revenge, she finds solace in the arms of another man. Yep, you heard that right. She goes for the ultimate revenge sex, unprotected no less. When she was giving birth, I held her hand. You know, I felt like I was the dad, which at the time, I was pretty sure I was. But I held her, I kept telling her, push, push, push. I want to see my baby. <laughs> and afterwards, right there, I held her. I signed the birth certificate and everything. I thought it was my baby. But here's the twist, folks. The family member who sent the text confesses that it was all a lie. Mr. Fisher wasn't cheating on Ms. Doyle. Now, she's left with the guilt of her actions, knowing that she cheated on the man she loves. Window of conception would be between April 19th to April 26th. And that's the window of time you cheated. I have bad dreams at night because- It has been determined by this court. Mr. Fisher. That's my baby no matter what. And you're my wife. The bombshell drops and it's a gut-wrenching revelation. Ms. Doyle confesses to Mr. Fisher that she cheated on him. The betrayal, the hurt, it's all written on his face. But here's the thing, folks. He still loves her. He's willing to stay and take care of Sophia no matter what. Talk about unconditional love. Because I know she thinks that I'm the father and I'll still hold her like she's mine. So Ms. Doyle, as you look back to the conception window, your fear is that this other man could be Sophia's biological father. Yes, Your Honor. I feel bad every day, and I live with what I did. And it was a mistake, one of the biggest mistakes I've ever made in my life. We've reached the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. The DNA results are in, and this will determine the future of their relationship. Will Mr. Fisher be Sophia's biological father? The tension is at fever pitch as the judge opens the envelope. Will love conquer all, or will this be the end of a fairy tale? Mr. Fisher, you are the father. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you, <God. laughs> How does it feel, Mr. Fisher, to know that that is your beautiful little baby girl? Well, I think we're gonna get married when we get back home. All right, let's get started. Today, we're diving into the case of Jackson V's Williams. So, Ms. Jackson and Mr. Williams had been chatting on social media for a couple of years. But on that fateful Memorial Day weekend in 2016, they finally decided to meet up. Right, the next day. Once she told me that. This man never has gotten anyone pregnant and doesn't have any kids. The baby ain't much here yet. And she talking about child support. I'm like, child support? And you just said you were pregnant? So she looking for a handout. So as you stand here as plaintiff saying he's a no good for nothing man, you have been a no good woman. Now, Ms. Jackson claims that Mr. Williams messaged her first, asking what she was up to. And you know what she said? Just chilling. Well, things escalated from just chilling quickly, and next thing you know, Mr. Williams is in his car driving to Ms. Jackson's house. You say the DNA test will prove Mr. Williams is your daughter's father, is that correct? Yes, you wanna. Mr. Williams, you claim you made a huge mistake by having a one night stand with the plaintiff. You say Ms. Jackson is a permissive nuisance who is trying to ruin your life. But hold on a second. Mr. Williams says it was actually Ms. Jackson who messaged him first. These two can't even agree on who initiated this whole thing. Anyway, they meet up, have a little chat, and before you know it, they're getting down and dirty in the backseat of Mr. Williams' car. Talk about a fast track to parenthood. He said he was in the area. I told him to come through. So I got in a car with him. We went to talking, and one thing led to another. We had sex. Just like that? Just like that. Did you use protection? No, yeah. So, you have sex? Is this a relationship that continued after that? Did you all say, hmm, 
well, this was nice, let's- Now, fast forward a few weeks, and Ms. Jackson realizes her period is late. And just like that, panic mode was activated. She reaches out to Mr. Williams on Facebook to let him know, but he brushes her off and never calls her back. When I found out that I was actually pregnant, he blocked me on Facebook. Oh, so as you're trying to reach him to say, hey, we had unprotected sex, I found out I'm pregnant, you could be a potential father, he's blocking you on Facebook. Yes, Shimano. And you don't have his phone number. No, you don't. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where things take a turn for the worse. Ms. Jackson creates a fake page to reach out to Mr. Williams again and let him know she's pregnant. But what does he do? He blocks her. We have to go by the facts. And the fact is, if it has not been proven that the other man is unable to father children, then you can't say for certain that it is Mr. Williams' baby provided any medical information about this other man. I talked to the other man about being pregnant. As a matter of fact, his family interacts with my daughter. Can you believe it? This poor woman is desperately trying to get in touch with Mr. Williams to let him know he might be a father, and he's out here blocking her like it's a game of dodgeball. Not cool, Mr. Williams, not cool. So you, you put Mr. Williams on child support, but the other man's family helps you with the child? Yes, Shawana. What you up to? I just went with whoever was gonna stand up, Your Honor. No, you went with both. You didn't go with one or the other. You got Mr. Williams on the hook talking about child support for him. Did you go down to the child support office? Yes, I and did. And gave him his name? Yes, I did, Your Honor. But wait, there's more. Turns out Ms. Jackson wasn't just seeing Mr. Williams around that time. Oh no, she had a little rendezvous with another man the very next day. Talk about playing the field. If you knew, in fact, this other man was a possibility and his family was involved with the child, why not also give the child support office the other man's name? Because, Your Honor, I didn't tell the other family about Mr. Williams. So wait, you are getting Mr. Williams in a legal situation because of your inability to own your own mistakes? And get this, she even told Mr. Williams about it. Can you imagine the look on his face when she confessed? Now here's where things get really messy. Ms. Jackson decides to put Mr. Williams on child support, but she conveniently forgets to mention the other man's name. Uh-oh, someone's playing both sides of the field here. It's like they muffins. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. Get around the city. <laughs> I want to have one son, oh, yeah. Yana. You yeah. say you only have one son, but you may have a daughter today. Hello. Put Mr. Williams on child support, but the other man's family helps you with the child? Yes, you want. What you up to? I just went with whoever was gonna stand up, Your Honor. No, you went with both. Ms. Jackson is now accusing Mr. Williams of being a deadbeat dad. But hold on, folks, because Mr. Williams is not going down without a fight. He claims that Ms. Jackson is just trying to ruin his life and pin a baby on him that's not even his. He even accuses her of sleeping around with other men. Now, you got one woman pregnant. Yeah. So that means this rendezvous you had with Ms. Jackson is nothing new for you. You riding up on houses and having one night stand and cars and just making <laughs> babies like they muffins. Oh, that doesn't mean, nah, that doesn't mean you're not, not engaging in the behavior that could lead to you having more. We're here to find out the truth, and that's exactly what Judge Lake is about to do. Will it be Mr. Williams, or could it be the other man? Let's find out. Mr. Williams, you are the father. I told you! <laughs> Oh, uh, you said you don't mind no child support, so we're not well, gonna have any problems. It won't have no problems. Good. I apologize for everything dealing with the situation at hand. I'll make sure I take my responsibility as a man and take care of money. All right, folks, in this episode, we have Mr. Milton suing Ms. Lewis, claiming she's trying to pin a baby on him because of a childhood crush. Mr. Milton, you have filed a paternity entrapment suit against the defendant. You claim that she is out to pin a baby on you because she's had a childhood crush on you. You, that she just can't get over, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. According to Mr. Milton, Ms. Lewis has been pursuing him since they were kids. He says she always had ulterior motives, even when he was in other relationships. Talk about dedication, folks. That you are 100% certain that Mr. Milton is your daughter Desire's biological father and claim that his meddling girlfriend is the only reason he is denying her, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. So, uh, Mr. Milton, explain to me this paternity entrapment suit, right? Right? Yeah. Now, here's where things get steamy. Ms. Lewis, who was married to another man at the time, admits to having unprotected sex with Mr. Milton. Oh, the plot thickens. She claims it was a one-time thing, but we all know how these one-time things tend to go on paternity court. So you met when you were younger? Yes. And you all liked each other? Yes. yes. So when you were in other relationships, you say Ms. Lewis used to always come around? Always come Were you around. coming around, Ms. Lewis? Yes, When he was in other relationships? Yeah. Coming Hello. around for what? Trying to uh, no, be with him? No, it was my Trying family. to be with me. 
she my was family not was me. close with his family. Fast forward a couple of weeks, and Ms. Lewis shows up at Mr. Milton's mother's house with some paperwork, claiming she's pregnant with his child. Wait, what? No sonogram, just paperwork? This is getting interesting, folks. I conceive easy. I'm like, it's over right here. Fun over. End of the night. After he told like me, that. I said, yes, I can. I it's see I'm fertile. Like, yes, I wow. can get pregnant. No, she, she said that. Then three weeks later, she showed up with a diagram. Whatever. I was like, wow, the baby. Wait, wait. Okay, Mr. Okay, Mr. 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 Milton, slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Now, here's where Mr. Milton's doubts kick in. He starts questioning the kid's paternity when he finds out Ms. Lewis is married to another man. This is turning into a roller coaster of doubt and confusion. The testimony. Yes, you. Yeah. All right. And it was sex one time, or how many times? It was just this first one time, day. First time. First time it was one time. Then after the baby was born, of course, you know, who's getting a little more familiar. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> yeah, it was more than one time. But that's after the baby was but born. But that, that, I'm just concerned with the conception. Thank yeah. you for the extra one info. Time. One time. Enter Mr. Milton's girlfriend, Ms. Daniels. She's got her own doubts and believes that Mr. Milton is not the father. But wait, folks, here comes the bombshell. Mr. Milton admits to calling the child ugly during an argument. Whoa, that's a low blow. Am I got proof? It is men talking crazy about my baby. Calls her ugly. Oh, I was like, I called her one time. Look, listen. She was up. like, he's listen, so he called listen, himself listen. ugly. One time, she you know, like saw my character. Me and her, we having an argument. You know what I'm saying? I get mad just to make her mad. Then she go back. All right, folks, it's time for the moment of truth. Will Mr. Milton be proven to be the father, or will Ms. Lewis's doubts be confirmed? Will Mr. Milton finally get the answers he's been seeking, or will Ms. Lewis's childhood crush be validated? We're about to find out, folks. Mr. Milton, you are the father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You. Just take a minute and take a breath. <laughs> I told you. How does that feel to finally know yeah, for I feel sure? feel great. No more doubts, no more African mans in the picture, none of that. 